welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the unexpected contract renewal of F1 Podcasts. I think I, I'm as staggered as anyone to find out that we're still here, I, based on our performance so far. I think I'm the best person to partner Max for seven next year. <laughs> In what? Table tennis. Oh, okay. Which welcome is a euphemism for, F- for fucking... <laughs> <laughs> welcome to For F1 Sake. Happy to be at Williams. Honest. You best of a bad bunch. I think Williams was the best drive that I could get next year. <laughs> Fuck my life. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Surprised to still be at Red Bull. Honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, I think Christian Horner fancies Perez. I mean, this feels like a can of worms that the lawyers are going to... Incidentally, that is Horner's nickname for Perez's penis. <laughs> Go on, let me see the can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the Audi F1 programme of F1 podcasts. We've started badly. And maybe it'll be all right, but it probably won't be. Hello, we're, we are the Audi Formula One FF1S podcast. We're not going to bother doing a podcast after, after every race when the races have been the best they've been for years. <laughs> we're Audi. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. We never doubted Hamilton, but we do doubt him next year. Yeah, he might have fucked it up. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peart, and despite our frankly piss poor performance, we're somehow back to bring you mediocre performances on a platform that really deserves better. Because that's what Formula One is all about now, apparently. We're going to look back over the past month when there were two Grand Prix that were pretty good, and there were also some hilarious and intriguing decisions within the F1 industry. Ooh, analysis and bum jokes. That's all to come. Joining me is Phil Tromans, and beside him is Terry Saunders. Hello. Uh, we'll, uh, no, shut up. We'll have time for idle chit-chat later. We're only here once a month, so we've got to get straight into the Formula One hot takes. Hot takes. Hot takes. We should write a jingle about hot takes. Ow. Don't Ooh. take it. <laughs> I think that's it, if you're, it. if you're listening and you can do jingles, send us some jingles. I think listener jingles have got much more chance of being, becoming a reality than anything we try and do. Um, yeah, no, despite our combined good... musical talents. That was a good first attempt. All right, fine. Um, shall I go first with my hot take? Hot take me! Uh, it's, I mean, it's not a particularly hot take. It's just stating the bleeding obvious. My hot take this week, this month, mm. is that yeah. Audi is finally getting its shit together. But it's too late. Probably. Because they've done basically naff all. How long has it been since they decided they were going to take over Sauber? I mean, 20... I don't know. A year, at least? It's been, uh, maybe longer I than it was 2022. S- several yeah. years. I don't know. All time is irrelevant these days. But it's been a long time, and Sauber have progressed from being not very good to still not being very good. I haven't seen a single change other than they got some green in their identity and some slightly ethically dodgy sponsors. Um, but now, maybe like what, a year and a bit, a year and a half until they're due to come splashing into this thing. Or is it next year? I've forgotten. Whenever they're due to come. 20, 2026. It is 2026. Fine. Um, they have decided <laughs> They've decided that it's going very badly, so they've got rid of the guy that was leading it, Andreas Seidel, ex of McLaren. But from memory, McLaren, when they weren't doing very well, can't remember. Was the Seidel there when they were doing any well? He was the transition between them doing terribly and them doing okay. Sometimes. Yeah. So when so anyway. he left, they got good. But he did join after McLaren Honda, so he can't mm. be given the all of it's the not woes. All his fault, but he definitely, you know, it doesn't look good. We don't, we don't have time for him. He's gone. He's dead, probably. <laughs> He's not at Sauber Audi Saudi anymore. Um, I will be calling them Saudi, by the way, for a long time. Um, they have now got. Well, they. <laughs> I say they've got. They've. They still haven't officially confirmed, but apparently they've got. Jonathan Wheatley, uh, ex-Red Bull, ex-high-up guy from Red Bull who isn't Christian Horner but does something seriously impressive. Probably should have found out his job title. Didn't. Um, But he has now been announced as the new team principal of Saudi. Except it wasn't Audi Saudi that announced it. It was Red Bull announcing it when they announced that he was leaving. Well, actually, wasn't it actually Formula One that announced it? Well, somebody announced it, and it wasn't Audi, and Audi yeah. didn't seem to expect them to, anybody to announce it, and they, they haven't said anything about it at all. Which, I mean, it seems like Audi might become the new Ferrari at this rate. This is going tremendously yeah. well. So why are you saying they're getting their shit together then? Well, because they have at least decided to 
take some action. Uh, they've also got uh, Matteo Binotto in, haven't they? What um, exactly? If talking Ferrari. about becoming the new Ferrari. Yes, they've got the old Ferrari <laughs> from when they weren't doing that well. They've got rid of the old McLaren guy from when they weren't doing that well, and they've got the Ferrari guy from when they weren't doing that well. And he's just announced that they're going to... Well, no, he hasn't. Somebody's announced that they're going to get the Red Bull guy from when Red Bull were doing well. But not for a bit, because Jonathan Wheatley, I think, is going to see out the season, and then he's going to be on gardening leave for a bit, and then he'll presumably take over like at the first race or something and find that the whole thing's a shit show and it's too late for him. I'm assuming... But going for the McLaren and the Ferrari guy, it seems like, you know that like on ChatGPT when it says kind of like, oh, I haven't been trained on any data after 2023, it feels like Audi have trained all of their F1 data on like the six month period of 2021 <laughs> when McLaren and Ferrari were shit. They're like, it's all we know. It's all we know. <laughs> let's, let's just take some random F1 data. I don't know. Let's take, let's take McLaren from this period and I don't know, maybe Ferrari from this period and let's base everything we do on that. That's what F1 is, and that's how it works. It doesn't bode well, and I'm quite surprised, because Audi has got a very illustrious history in motorsport. And I, I would be very happy to be proved wrong, but right now, my prediction is that they are going to be god-awful for quite but a it, while. It does feel that, and this might actually be a problem with Formula 1, is that it doesn't matter who you are, if you come into Formula 1, you're just going to be a shambles. And I don't <laughs> quite know what it is about being in the, the radar of Formula 1 that just makes everyone fuck up. What's, but, the, fa what's the famous saying? If you, want, if, you want to, if you want to make a idiot in F1 start with a clever man. I, I don't know, I just made that No, up. it's about money, isn't it? If you yeah, want yeah to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to paraphrase to that into blokes. You've got to start off with, as a billionaire. Yeah, but, but, um, but, with, but with IQ. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not. Every, I have... I don't know where I'm I going. I am with no this. closer to knowing what that was. No, I don't know phrase. what that was. I started. <laughs> Thanks. I, I essentially done what Audi did. I started without really a clue of where I was going, and I thought <laughs> I'd try and make I, it up halfway through. I thought I'd be Andrea Seidel and just chip in, and it turns out I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So actually, was it a disaster that wasn't very well prepared, or was it a brilliant analogy for where Audi are at right now? Um, you we'll talk about it a bit more uh, later on. But isn't isn't there? Uh, shit show status one of the reasons that science hasn't gone there well yeah we are gonna we're gonna delve into science in a bit all right so let's, let's uh, not give it away the trouble with every, everything's everything's oh, all related this is the thing but yeah let's let's seamlessly segue into another hot take yeah terry <laughs> perez is somehow still at red bull even though we knew he'd been signed for the contract because at the start of the year he was doing quite well then they signed him as he was getting shit. And after they signed him for next year, he's got really shit, but he's got next year's contract. And then there are rumours that they're going to drop him. And now they're saying they're not going to drop him. But they're not saying he's signed for this year and next. They're just kind of saying he'll be back after the summer break. And the press release doesn't even say in what capacity. He could just be sweeping up. We don't know. <laughs> but as you said, um, what's his name? Kevin Wheatley has left Red Bull. That's right. To go to... Uh, from uh, <laughs> Inspector from whatever he was in. <laughs> And, you know, I feel like everyone's... I, I feel like Adrian Newey's left Red Bull. Kevin, Kevin Wheatley's leaving. Um, <laughs> every, it's like rats leaving a sh sinking ship. It does feel that um, Toto Wolf trying relentlessly to get Max Verstappen is starting to work. Because He'll probably go. Perez is going to be the last man there. It's going to be just Perez and Horner. <laughs> It's going to be Perez in the in a completely empty Milton Keynes warehouse. Going, they said I wouldn't take, I wouldn't stay. Now look at them, I'm the only one left. And then Horner comes around the comes around the partition wall, going, I guess you're my PA now. And the Benny Hill music plays. No, I think it'd be more like a horror film. I think I think he'd be sitting there going, I did it, I finally made it. And then Horner would just smash him to death with the 2012 World Championship trophy or something. I mean, that's the rule quite bleak but yeah i mean it seems from what i can tell that perez's new contract basically turns into official law the fact that he now has a contract that isn't worth the worth the paper it itself is printed on it's very meta his, his contract seems to say we can think about firing you at any point and we might or we might not yeah the rumors are they, they, new, aren't they well the rumors are they've made him sign this new contract that says we can fire you now yeah Whereas a previous contract had like performance clauses, and now they're just like, oh no 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 no! If you look at me the wrong way, you're out. <laughs> yeah, if you don't exactly match up to Max Verstappen, you're out. But if you beat Max Verstappen, you're out. 
And, you've got to be like that. that. You've got to be that close to Max Verstappen or nothing. Okay, then after the summer break, do you expect him to be there? I mean, what's what? that thing? He's definitely going to be there. Max Verstappen and Ricardo in the same fucking helicopter. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, who knows? <laughs> well, well, there was completely unconfirmed speculation that that this was quite a surprise for everybody involved. This decision. So this was immediately after the last race. Whatever it was, was it Belgium or Hungary? Whichever one it was. Um, uh, that there was a big Red Bull head honcho meeting and they decided that Perez would stay. But apparently everybody else outside that meeting was fully expecting him to not be staying. Um, Doesn't it just feel like a huge kind of Shakespearean, Machiavellian plot? I'm just using words I don't understand. It's a huge Shakespearean, Machiavellian plot and yet all the people involved are thick as pig shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an interpretation of Hamlet. And it's like... Cause so if if the last few races were to be an indicator for the rest of the season, then Red Bull will lose the Constructors' Championship this year, which is unthinkable when the way they started the year and how fast their car was. And I, th- I think they will. And I said it last year. I said this was going to happen, and it did. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chill out. No one likes it. No, no one listened to me then, <laughs> which is not good for a podcast. But um... Well, that's why we're monthly now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um... Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't understand why they've kept him. I know there's like, well, better the devil you know, rather than Daniel Ricciardo, who has a history of being shit, and Liam Lawson, who's ever done only ever done three or four races, or Yuki, Yuki Tsunoda, Tsunoda, who they hate because they, they just must just be racist. Like. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not having one of them in my family. Red Bull, no. I don't think it's because he's Japanese. I think it's because he's short. I don't trust him. That's uh, that's a race. Um, <laughs> Is that you what the riots are about? <laughs> Fuck both of you. Short people. The, the only things I can think of is that there are races coming up that he's been good at and has won. Baku, Singapore, they're not too far away. I reckon maybe they'll wait until those ones, see if he manages to pull it out of the bad there again. If not, he'll be gone, I think. And also the Mexican Grand Prix is coming up and he is the big draw of the Mexican Grand Prix. Well, there is that as well, yes. When's Mexico? That's towards the end of the year, isn't it? Or have yeah, they changed but it I was year? reading some rumours that Carlos Slim, who is his major backer and one of the richest men in the world, Ooh. is, and this is scurrilous rumours on Twitter, so definitely not true, but, you know, he's basically come down hard on Red Bull and Horner and gone, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Do you want, you want some sponsorship money? Yeah. Oh, more than that, you know, do you want to end up uh, having trouble with the oh, cartels? Oui. I see, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, we're not saying that Carlos Slim is involved with the cartels. We should be very no, careful. People on Twitter are saying that. I'm are not they? They're them. insinuating. It's the implication. No, 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 no. They're doing it. We're not doing it. I'm not saying it. They're saying it. Yeah. I can give you names if you're lawyers coming at me. I don't think Carlos Slim is part of a cartel. But you're saying that Christian Horner doesn't want to get rid of Sergio Perez because of the implication. Christian I mean, Horner nothing's is definitely gonna involved in the cartel. Nothing's yes. going to happen. Christian Horner owes a lot of gambling debt. You can just tell in his face. Can't you? <laughs> he does have that. He's saying he's some kind of it, mule. This all comes back to our drugs in the tyres theory that we've been having for years now. I think yes. it's great. He does look like he's got something shoved up his ass, doesn't he? <laughs> well, I've seen the pictures, yeah. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very surprised, but I think that if Perez, I reckon Perez has got like three or four more races, and then he's definitely out. But having said that, I said that last season, and he's still there, so he's going to be like Kimi Raikkonen, but more incompetent. There is an interesting point though, because if he doesn't get fired soon, where's he going to go next year? Is he going to stay in Bin Forty One? Well, care. we've got some stuff to talk about later, and All that, right, might, that might form part of it. We'll cool see. Then. All right. Um, my hot take is that, uh, and I said this in the last episode, that right. I, wanted Norris, I wanted Norris to get angry, and he started getting angry. He's pissing and me off. I, <laughs> in the last month, you've seen him get angry and annoyed, and I think he is going to crumble as the season progresses. They're talking about him having this reset over the summer break. He's, he's not going to reset. He's going to come back a petulant rich prat, and Piastri is going to overtake him and beat him in the championship. I'm going to say it here and now. My hot take! I'm going to say it here and now. I, I now prefer Russell to Norris. Ooh. But we'll See, get into that later. I am well. staggered to find that you are a fickle man. <laughs> this, is, this is astonishing. We will we'll delve into the weeds as, the, as, as we progress. But uh, now that is out of the way, we can finally say hello. Phil, what have you been up to over the past month? Hello. Um, feels weird doing it this way around. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've been talking for ages. It's weird. Um, it's all for the YouTube, you see. It's for the algorithm, probably. I don't know. Um, what have I been doing? I, I'm, I, well, we arranged... We had a month to prepare. We arranged on, a holiday. Uh-oh. Rearranged which a holiday. Is, no, we arranged a holiday. Myself oh, and my really? lovely current <laughs> wife uh, arranged to go... Uh, our, a friend of ours was going away and they've got a lovely house in Margate and they were like, do you want to come and stay at the house in Margate? We were like, yes! Margate. It's a cheap holiday because we fucking broke because of thanks Liz Truss and your fucking mortgage nonsense yeah um, I know she fucked me too uh, not, uh, anyway um, so that was good so I was supposed to be on holiday at the end of this week um, but then uh, then it all fell through uh, so now we're not going on holiday at the end of this month at the end of this week however yeah, we are going on holiday and a last minute bargain basement holiday I'm going to a family holiday camp in the Netherlands at the end of this month Ooh, is it well, this is the thing. That would like, be amazing. A few years that ago, I'd have gone, oh, what have you become, Dromans? But I'm actually genuinely looking forward to it. <laughs> Whereabouts? Uh, Ostkapelle. Oh, yeah. I'm sure what, you all know uh, where's it. Where's that? It's on the, no. on the coast. It's, near the Hague? Well, I mean, it's the tiny country. It's, everything's near the Hague. So Yeah, but the Hague's near the coast. It's like on the beach. I mean, it might be. It's probably close to Zandvoort. I don't know. It's in the Netherlands. Do we have any I've cities in Britain that are called the something? We don't do it. The mm. Palace of Verse. That's not there. Uh... <laughs> well, that's just a thing. Yeah. Not a city. Not the a Yorkshire. Yorkshire. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. The, the man town. with the golden yeah, no. gun. No, that's a really good. The Wirral. The Wirral. The Wirral. The I fucking did it. Is it the Wirral? Is it the Wirral? Like or is it just Wirral? No, shut up. It's the Wirral. Right. I've won Trivial Pursuit. Okay. Well good. done. I feel like we're on Only Connect and I've never even seen it. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the. Uh, it's anyway, a I'm, I'm, going, I'm going on a holiday to the Netherlands at the end of this month. Uh, I'm driving there. I'm going Wonderful. on a ferry. On us, Germany. It'll be. Yep. Uh, my daughter's quite looking forward to it because she's only ever been to one other country and now she's going to get to go to three Ooh. France and Belgium for like 20 minutes. Great. Um, 20 I've, minutes? I've, I've been learning Dutch. It's going very well. They all speak English. I wouldn't worry about they it. They do. And what's um, weird about Dutch is it is literally halfway between English and German. It's really weird. Mm, it is weird, language, yeah. isn't it? We should have, uh, should we should to, have uh, um, a friend of the podcast, Drew Stern, on because he speaks fluent Dutch. He can probably give us some top tips. Well, oh, why don't you go on fucking holiday with him? Well, who says I'm yeah. not? Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, Drew. Go to Rotterdam and check out the cube houses. They're really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This could be Rotterdam or... Yeah, anyway. You see where I'm going with that. I Liverpool, so. Rome. Terry? Beautiful South, they're from the Wirral. I'm not sure where <laughs> that would have been a great, that is a great like, Radio 2 link. That it? sounds like a genuine <laughs> fact, doesn't yeah. it? That's going to end up on their Wikipedia page. We'll be page. back with more Wirral facts right after Bachman Turner Overdrive. <laughs> it's the Wirral. The beautiful South. <laughs> <laughs> the Foo Fighters. Oh, no, they're from Hull. Ah, shit. The Who Hull. Who's famous? The Guns N' Roses. From... Isn't the Cheryl Wirral. Cole from the... No, she's a No, Jewel. she's from Newcastle. Oh, someone's from the Wirral. Will Folks. Paul O'Grady. Jenny Frost. Daniel Craig. Daniel Paul Humphrey. John These... Peel. Paul Hollywood. Chris Boardman. Pete Burns. Elvis Costello. Glenda Jackson. How many do you need? Oh, it is just Wirral. I've been in the same room as two of those <laughs> That <people>. ruins everything. <laughs> it's not game over. I don't give a fuck who's from the Wirral. I want to know yeah, who's from them. the Wirral. Right, anyway, uh, yeah, Terry, what have you been up to? Have I been on holiday? Was I on holiday last time you we went? Didn't you go on holiday to the Netherlands? No, I went to You Italy. went to Pisa? Oh, whatever. Same but thing. that's happened already, isn't it? Yes, it has. Yeah, that we are. Yeah. All right. I've actually spent most of the month stripping wallpaper, which is oh. exciting. Okay. Uh, well, in your in, house or yeah. as a job? No, in what? In me and my partner's apartment. Um, oh. So has she moved in with you or have you moved in with her? I'm moving in with her. Okay. Mm. So um, you're... Are you still at the same area? Oh, yeah, we're at like half an hour. Posh we're Berlin, like, not Posh Berlin. Apart. We're in the, we're in the, icon. We're in the yeah, we're in the cool bit. But um, interestingly, well, for me at least, most flats in Berlin have wood chip wallpaper. And mm. wood chip wallpaper, if you're not like aware... Like it's the 80s or the 70s. Yeah, well, wood chip wallpaper in Britain means you're poor. Because when I, I grew up with wood chip wallpaper... And it meant I, and all my friends didn't have wood chip wallpaper because they weren't house, poor. It? It's council house stuff. It's yeah. shit, right? So I see it in an apartment and I'm just like, ah, I feel like I'm poor again. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm broke. <laughs> but, you know, ah, <laughs> povo. Ah. And, um, and nobody else, nobody else has this reference. So everyone else is like, oh, I quite like it. No, just... None of the people in German understand what you're doing when you go, ah, povo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who really knows what poor is? I don't know. 
opening of the EU. So they like it, like it's like a bit of vintage furniture. Or yeah, yeah. You know, you know how some people kind of go, oh, we've got some nice old wallpaper in our apartment, mm. in our place. We're going to keep it. We're going to frame it. That's what people are like with wood chip here. And I'm like on a campaign to be like, this has got to fucking go. And underneath the wood chip, this beautiful kind of flaky paint in like blues and, you know, it's been... And then two things. One, I'm a bit worried it's lead, but... <laughs> I couldn't, Probably. Find, couldn't find a test anywhere, so I stripped it all anyway. So I'll probably be dead next week. And two, the, the worst thing about living in this city is, you know, you take off the, the wallpaper that's obviously gone up in the 70s or something, and you see this old paint, and you just think, was this paint witness to some kind of war crime? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it wasn't, was a family it's probably got ripped a bomb away behind it. From, yeah, was a family ripped away from this apartment? Oh, that's awful. Oh, that is awful. Does it have bloody no. handprints smeared on it? <laughs> Yeah, it says, why? Varum, varum. Uh, imagine if you find some old graffiti, that'd be horrible. I thought you could say, imagine if you find some old bodies. Just, yeah. yeah. You have given me an idea, though, which would be to uh, harvest as much of the wood chip wallpaper in the UK and sell it to some uh, hipster Germans and just say how cool it is. Well, actually, I was having a very fascinating conversation with someone saying that, you know, that kind of the glass you used to get in... It used to be like cheap glass in like factories and schools. It's like got the, the it's kind of frosted with like the wire kind of crisp. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff, yeah. Apparently, that is now you. Now that you've let Britain's left the EU, no one in Britain makes it, and the only the only place that makes it in Europe is in Germany. Oh. And now that stuff to get it across to England is super <gasps> expensive. Ooh, Whereas here, really? it's dirt cheap. What a funny oh. thing you learn. That is funny. So next time oh, you come be, back to the UK, we we'll could have be a, millionaires. A suitcase full of wired glass. One very oddly shaped suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 20 foot by 20 foot, but only three inches thick. <laughs> would, it go in the, would it go above the seats? <laughs> right, in the spirit of doing as little work as possible, let's turn to you, our long-suffering and patient listeners, who have been writing in with your burning Formula One questions. If you've got an F1 problem and nobody else can solve it, maybe you can call, well, us. Edward Blackmore, how many hats does Perez really sell, or does he have something on Christian? Not to be replaced at this point because qualifying second was good, but then falling back to seventh in the race and being passed by your own teammate again isn't... Isn't. <laughs> <laughs> a, a reminder to uh, everyone writing questions to proofread them before you press. Uh, proofread questions. them and please <laughs> use grammar. Not like us. Um, I thought this was a riddle at first. How many hats <laughs> does Perez really sell? <laughs> How many hats would a Perez sell before <laughs> he so retains nice. his seat? Yeah, hang on. Let's just break the sample. I don't he know what asking? he means exactly. How many hats does Perez re- uh, really sell? How many or hats does, he have does Perez Christian? really sell? Does he mean? Oh, I think does he have something means. on Christian Horner, and that's why he's no, there? I think I shit. think he means is he popular enough to shift the merch? Is that why they've kept him because he's popular in oh, I Mexico? See. How and many hats does Southern Perez North really America? Sell? How many roads must Perez? That's exactly the sell? exactly the same joke I just oh. made, but yes. Yeah, we're making it again. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm doing it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. It was, it was good. It was very good. Um, I, I mean, I can't believe there's that many people outside of Mexico buying Perez hats, are they? Mexico is quite big, though. Although, although on Netherlands. Twitter a few weeks ago, uh, some some Lance Stroll fan had a go at me, and I was like, I can't believe there's a Lance Stroll fan. Had a go at you? Yeah, I said something dispiriting about. Uh, How dare you have a go Lance at a rich boys? A rich boy. What did he say? What? I can't what? remember. He just, Great story, he, he, had, he took umbridge with something I'd said and uh, I looked on his profile and he was literally like, it, his profile picture was Lance Stroll. It might have been Lance Stroll. <laughs> I'd do that. Would you do that? Like, like, didn't David Bowie do that? He used to just like hide out on the internet and start messaging on, um, yeah, message boards and stuff. Well, and, like, I have a story on. about this. <laughs> I have no oh, idea. I don't, I don't know where you're going with this. It's all going a bit Hugh Edwards for my liking. No, this was true. This was true. He used to like go on message boards. Not Hugh Edwards. I'm not, if, not, not making any like like music message boards. And he'd say, "Oh, what did you think of this?" And all this kind of shit. Do I'm you like my music? <laughs> yeah, do, basically. Do you like my music? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Do it. My email it. address is davidbowie at hotmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hotmail.com. Uh, My password is wazza, wazza, wazza. <laughs> Stardust69. <laughs> Am I a robot? I do not know. <laughs> I might be an alien. <laughs> I'm speaking in a most peculiar way. Your face goes like Elvis when you do that for some reason. Have you ever seen Elvis and Bowie in the same same room? I think I have now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I feel like we've got off topics, unsurprisingly. Yeah. What did Ed say? Um, oh, next question. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've touched on Perez, haven't we? We, do, we don't know. We don't know why he's staying. It's and he hasn't got anything on Christian Horner. Bizarre Hall. to seen me. his penis already. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- 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 if there's one thing that Christian Horner is now in a position of strength, it's like, I- I- I've given it all away. You have it all. There's nothing else you can come at me with. Maybe that's what Perez has got on Horner. He's the only person in the Formula One world who hasn't seen his penis. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone else has got the WhatsApp messages, but Perez has got the Telegram messages. Yeah. Perez isn't in the group, is he? Yeah, yeah. You know that much. Uh, okay, A underscore J underscore MCC uh, has said, uh, how bad have you been at a job? Not been fired, but should have been. <laughs> apropos, apropos of nothing. <laughs> have I ever told the story? I mean, I did get fired. But have I ever told the story about being caught uh, entrapment oh. at Dixon's? Oh, no. I think so. Not recently. I either. love that. Is it Dixon's, though? That so date, I immediately worked. dates it, yeah. I worked yeah. in Dixon's in Cheltenham Spa. The popular, the now defunct uh, electronics store in Britain. A, yes. a posh Dixon's then, in Cheltenham Spa. I mean, quite... Cheltenham's not as posh as you think, but that's uh, fine. Bits of it are. It's got a cigar and cheese shop there. It's fucking yeah, posh. Bits There's of it a posh, posh bit of Bits Cheltenham. of it are definitely not. <laughs> bits of it are very posh. Bits are not. But um, okay. So I was working in Dixon's. It was one of my first jobs. I must have been about like, 17 or 18. And... I didn't really get on with anybody. I was quite shy. I had a lot of social anxiety. And Aww. my uniform didn't fit. And <laughs> one day, I was on the shop floor totally alone. And the phone rang. And I, to this day, I have phone anxiety. I don't like answering the phone, but I was on my own. So I answered the phone. I went, hello, Dixons, can I help? And the voice on the other end of the phone went, oh, hi. Um, who's this? I was like, oh, it's Terry. Hello, it's Terry. No, oh, this is head office. Um, we're just doing a survey about how people answer phones. You're not in any trouble, but you're supposed to say, hello, Dixon's Cheltenham, and then how can I help? But it's fine. It's, you know, you're not in trouble, but if you can just tell your management that we've called, that'd be great. Then I, I, so I put the phone down, and I fucking shit myself, because I don't want to talk to management. I don't want to be in trouble. I don't care they said I'm not in trouble. I'm clearly in trouble, because I got it wrong. So I just thought, you know, I do what I still do to this day, which is... I just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and a day or two later, the assistant manager um, pulls me to one side and says, Hey, Terry, um, we got a call from head office saying that somebody was uh, answered the phone for a survey, uh, but no one said who it was. Was that, was that you? And then I made the mis- Well, not the mistake, because I don't regret it now. But I said, Nope, wasn't me. <laughs> 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 and then... Later that day, the manager calls me into his office and says, you're lying to me. And I was like, hello. (laughs) What? (laughs) Sorry, what? (laughs) And he said, the other day, we were all up in the staff room. We were looking on the camera and saw that you were the only person in the store. So we thought we'd play a little practical joke on you. So I rang you from the staff room. (laughs) What the fuck? I know. And we thought we'd do a little funny thing. Ha, ha, ha. And then you've just proven yourself to be a liar. And I was like, fuck you. I yeah, fuck you. I didn't say fuck you because I was 17. I went, oh, sorry, it won't happen again. Bye. Uh, but in hindsight, fuck that guy. What a, what a do you thing to do to a shy fucking new kid on his like first day. Fuck them. Fuck Dixons. I'm glad they went out of fucking business. <laughs> oh, shit. I wasn't going to swear. Sorry. <laughs> it's, right, it's only two. That's, pretty, that's the record, I think. For, it's only Dixons. They deserve it. That yeah. is outrageous <clears throat> I mean, behavior. Yeah. yeah. That is awful. Mm. I feel really sorry for you. You must have felt so humiliated. And the fact that you've still got phone anxiety, it just... Those bastards. But I stole loads when I left. <laughs> got all the Betamax players you could carry. Microwaves. <laughs> Mini discs. <laughs> I've got ten microwaves at home. Oh, I've got some black yeah, laser discs. They're coming at me. <laughs> if anyone wants a diamond Rio, I've got loads of them. Uh Brilliant. Um, I've only I've touched. I've been made redundant numerous times. I've only ever been fired once. Ooh, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's not a particularly funny story. I was working for an IT company 
when I was about 20. And my girlfriend at the time cheated on me and I found out and I was very upset and uh, didn't cope with it very well. And I basically didn't do any work for about half a day. And, Jesus. Um, uh, I was Because I was working from home, I like traveled around the country fixing people's computer software and didn't do anything, didn't answer my phone. And they fired me straight away for not for not answering the phone. Fucking hell. I was like, Jesus. Half a day, Jesus Christ. I've yeah. ruined you half a day's work. <laughs> I was I was slightly taken aback. <laughs> but um yeah, in retrospect, it then led me to a glorious career um working as a manager in Dixon's in Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> Where I got You're my revenge on you. everyone Fucking that worked for me. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh I've never been fired. Oh uh, piss right. off. Of course you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> No, I've never been fired. You ever had a job? No. In fact, I got accused of doing something really horrible uh, when I was working in a garden centre, which was lobbing all the leaflets that I was supposed to put round on the cars into the hedge next to the garden centre. But I was like, it wasn't me. And basically, I put them in the on all the cars at the local hospital, and some security guard that was there picked them all out again and threw them in the hedge of this garden centre. And then I got blamed for it. But because I went back to the scene of the crime and cleaned them all up, they were like, well, it obviously wasn't you. Sorry that we accused you of doing it because I'm such a goody two-shoes. I'm, I'm impressed that you're hanging on to that lie for so long. You fucking threw them in the hedge, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't. That, I didn't throw them in the hedge. I didn't throw them in the hedge. Why would I throw them in the hedge? Because you don't want to put them on cars because no one's going to fucking look at them. Yeah, but my fucking choice was either do that or water geraniums. It was like, whatever. Water I'm going to go for a water around the fucking life. Uh, Not well, throwing yeah, things into hedges. Yeah, that's true. I did quite enjoy water. Yeah. It was quite a good job, actually. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Skur67. Why keep Perez on when RB is historically so ruthless with driver performance? Because they've got no one else to put in the car. It's ridiculous. Well, no, they but have. They no, have. they haven't. They haven't. They've got no one perfect, they've got but no they've one got good. some options that I would say are better. I'd say Liam Lawson is a better option. They because can't worst case Liam scenario, Lawson. he's still shit. They still they, don't win the championship. Look, Why can't they put after, Liam Lawson? After Gasly and Albon and the other guy and the other guy who can't remember their names, you can't put a rookie or a near rookie in with Verstappen. It will just destroy them, right? You can't put Ricardo in because he's shit. You can't put Perez in because Perez is there already. And you can't put Sonoda in because they hate the Japanese. So they've got no one. <laughs> That's why the Honda thing fell apart. This is all making sense now. Perez is their best, best, worst, worst option option. I mean, surely they've got enough in the... in the. They, surely they could dig through the annals, dig through their file of faxes of old Red Bull drivers. Do you reckon they tried Fettel to see if he was still around? Once you fucked off everybody, nobody wants to work with you. It's, it's, they called Jaime Algaswari and were like, it's not going to work. <laughs> Uh, there you go, Scare 67. I think that answers your question. Bumberclat81. How long until mutiny at RB is employees sure to miss out on bonuses due to failed WCC bid? Um, That's a good point, actually. Well, do you mean Red Bull or do you mean RB? Hashtag, what a stupid fucking name for a team that was. Um, I assume he means Red Bull. Agreed, move I on. think so, because they've also used the number two instead of two. So, yes. Sure, they mean Red sure. Bull. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe. I can't imagine the staff are wildly happy about it. But uh, you know, if we if we go with Terry's point, then he's the best of the bad option. The better the bad no, 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 no. But it's no, it's true though because you know they're going to get a huge bonus if they win the constructors' championship, and they're not going to win the constructors' championship due to Perez, which means through the re the rest of the year, the mechanics and the engineers and the staff are going to get more and more pissed off. We're just going to be giving him the side eye all the time. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. Bring in, bring him Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson has no expectations on him. He's only been, he, he would only be brought in because the current driver is shit. Halfway through the season, They're, I don't think they'd expect him to do well. They'd be just like, you can't be any worse. And to be honest, even if he was any worse, they'd just go, ah, it's all right. Red yeah, Bull the truth famously is probably, patient with new drivers. He probably would be worse because the Red Bull is. If, if the other drivers that have been the Staffan's team or anything to go by. Driving that Red Bull is an incredibly hard job, and Verstappen's the only one that can do it. And the other drivers are never anywhere near him. And Perez is probably still the closest that anyone's been to him. I mean, he's probably the best of a bad bunch. Yeah, actually, when you say it like that, you are probably right because yeah, because Perez does have at least a not a spectacular but a reasonable background. He's been in F1 for oh a long time. How long has he been in? Yeah. About twelve years, something like that. For, since nineteen eighty. <laughs> 
<laughs> Famously just lost out to Alan Jones, didn't he? Um, well and, done. Well done. I got that. I got that you knew who won the championship. Every now and again, I chuck one in for the old school guys. Um, no, uh Louder. 984. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old ones are the best. Uh, apart from Louder, obviously. Um, He's dead. <laughs> so, yes. Um, uh, that took me about three minutes to get No, I, th- I, think, I think it's a good point. Like, that car must be I'd, be... I'd be actually intrigued to know when all this pans out and we find out more about the car. I'd like to get people like... I'd like, I'd like every other driver just to be able to have a go in the Red Bull. Once the regulations fall changing, it doesn't matter. I'd like to get have a day where they all just get to drive that Red Bull and find out if it is actually as much of a handful as everyone seems to think Maybe it is. Maybe it will be that... Because you know when like David Coulthard will do like... Oh, we're driving the Red Bull down the motorway in Afghanistan or something like that. And you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that one didn't car. end well, did it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always a car from a few years ago. So in a few yeah. years, he'll drive the 2024 car and he'll just be like, fuck <laughs> it out. <laughs> yeah. Or Martin Brundle. Eternal Cockney. Because <laughs> Martin Brundle does one every year for Sky, doesn't he? He always jumps in an F1 car every year. Yeah. And yeah, maybe it'll be like a, a 30 second hell. segment when he comes out the pits and immediately spoons it into the barriers. Like, this is uh, fucking all over the place, like Burger, mate. whenever it was. Was it Burger? He did that when he came out of the pits and crashed straight away, didn't he? Can't remember now. Oh, dear. Exactly. Right in. Uh, JWV 2023. Why do you hate George Russell so much? Okay, 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 okay. I thought he did really fucking well at the last race where he got disqualified. I thought, fucking hell, he's done it. He's really good. I'm... I'm going to have to slightly reevaluate how I think about him. And also, mm. we'll save it for later, but Norris not giving the place back to Piastri the race before. What a dick. <laughs> Thank you, Endorf. Thank you, Mike. But why, why <laughs> did you hate him previously? We know now that you don't hate him, but why did you? He looks well, to be like fair, the question a... is, why do you? Because so, he's yeah. a twat. Oh, God, he looks so <laughs> annoying. His hair, his attitude, his demeanour, the way he's skinny, the way he... <laughs> he's... He's one of those people that puts, like, one, when he's leaning against the wall, he puts one foot against the wall. That, oh! <laughs> Doing he has done a couple of things, though. He puts one foot on the tyre. Oh. I, I think he's got a good PR team, though, because he's done a couple of things on social media recently which have made me think, oh, he's, he's actually all right. Like, self-mocking. Like, he knows that he gets... What, when he was looting time. that lush yesterday? <laughs> what was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, George, you and your Man TikToks. of the people. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like one of us. Uh, uh, there we go. That answered your question. Ben Moore House, 88. Uh, who do you think would be the worst guest to interview during Martin's grid walk? Bit of an unfortunate number at the end of your uh, username there, Ben, hopefully. Hopefully that's the year you were born, rather than uh, some sort of Nazi reference. But um, anyway, oh, really, is that a Nazi? Yeah, eight eight H H Hull Hitler. Oh, ben, ben. No, don't fucking s- hell. don't say that in Ben and what George is... Russell out in Hull smashing windows. Hang on, there's, there's someone at my door. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, I understand you can't get involved in this conversation. Um, who would be yeah, the worst took, guest to interview? I took the wallpaper off. Yeah, why? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So there was no wallpaper. Um, who would be the worst guest to interview? I mean... Goebbels. Uh, yeah, Hitler. <laughs> any of the former Nazi party. I'd say. Tommy Robinson. Um, Nigel Farage. Yeah, he'd be pretty bad. Yeah, um, he would be bad. Any fascist. <laughs> Donald Trump on the grid. Oh, fuck. Well, he almost fucking was at Austin, wasn't he? Was Miami. It? It was. Miami, whatever it was, yeah. Um, Interestingly, so I, I have, since I moved here, I've because I, I used to watch the pirate. So I used to watch Now TV in Britain. Then mm-hmm. I couldn't get that working here, so I, I was pirating for a while. Okay. And yeah. the problem with pirating is you miss the race because I'm just watching Somalians take over <laughs> a boat. God, that, that oh. sounded racist. It, I don't think it was yeah. racist. Did, it did, sounded, did sound racist, yeah. but yeah. there are a lot of racist. Somali pirates. I know, so but there's I some think truth we should in cut that. that. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> Not all Somalis are pirates. But now I watch F1 TV. Oh. And what's weird about F1 TV is in the commentary, you can still pick David Croft and Martin Brundle. But in the preamble, they've got their own coverage, which just... Oh. So they don't have Simon Lazenby and... No, no, they've got... Um, Danica Patrick being a mentalist. Lawrence Barreto and all oh, the guys on Drive to Survive with the 
superlative voice. Will you know, Yeah, Will Buxton. He's the main host. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, right. I mean, it could be and worse. It's fine. It's a bit lame. <laughs> it, it just doesn't quite have the gravitas of like Sky or BBC or Child of War before. There's something <laughs> missing that I've never quite been able to put my finger on. Is it Murray but, Walker? But, well, no, but there's something about... <laughs> You kind of, even though it's probably got a bigger global audience, it feels like no one else is watching it kind of thing. Whereas at least with Sky or something, you're, you get the impression that everyone's watching at the same time. And they do a grid walk with uh, a, a lady whose name I forget, and she's very good at presenting. But again, watching a grid walk with someone who doesn't have any gravitas or no one really knows who they are, it's just, it's just pointless. It's, it's just weird. You and, would have thought that Martin Brundle would have trademarked the grid walk because he's the only one to have done it. Yeah, but now it seems to be a thing that everyone does, which is he one should of the have trademarked why it. It's it should have been. It yeah. should have had their have their lawyers on anyone else that walks down the grid interviewing people. Shouldn't be allowed. Or just yeah. interviewing people in general. Yeah. Or making everyone who does an interview have to be on a grid. So like news night. <laughs> The, yeah. only, the the good thing about the well the only thing not the only thing I like Martin Brundle doing the grid walk but every every race it's always the story about who refuses to speak to him and if you refuse to speak to him you're effectively cancelled what, what are you saying about you you're cancelled yeah it's like I don't know you're you're scum to... and you know nothing about F1 and you shouldn't be there you should not be I want to be legally very careful here but I've never heard him offer this opinion. But I get the impression that Martin Brundle is one of those anti-woke people who goes on about cancel culture in the pub. Just that, that is an impression I get. I don't. I don't think he is. I think there might be a, sl- I don't get a slight. That impression at all. I think there might be a slight element of it purely due to the fact that he is of a generation. Mm. Remember, he made that. He made that joke about uh, travellers a few years ago that came back to bite. There you oh, go. Yeah. Perfect. Per- perfect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But you I, can't I, say anything nowadays. <laughs> I actually interviewed Martin Brundle about ten years ago, and he uh, he wasn't on a grid. He wasn't anti woke to me at all, which oh. was uh, which was very it, actually it was on a fake grid because it was at some some event, and it was on like a, they they'd done it all out to look like motorsporty, so they just put checker checkered flags and fake You're grids so on the place. Glam, Phil. You're Did so I? Glam. I'm sure I've told the story before, but back in the old podcast, guys, there was uh, a start of a season. It was just when podcasts were getting popular and Sky did a special press conference for podcasters <laughs> with Martin Brundle and David Croft and everyone. And I, w- and I was the only one available to do it. So I was on this phone, this like conference call for like half an hour and everyone was asking all these boring questions. And again, my phone anxiety was coming back and I was just there going, I've got to ask a fucking question. Hello, but- it's Terry from <laughs> Dixon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that thing especially when it's like a big thing that, like, the, the longer you leave it the harder it is to say something you know that feeling mm. where you're just like, oh god and they were like okay any final questions and for the I'm so sorry to say I can't remember the specific question I did but I tried to do a funny question to Martin Brandle oh, no. and the response I got was right well I don't think I have to answer that do I <laughs> <laughs> that's Ouch. amazing yeah out well, a taste of his own medicine there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, maybe he's dish it out, trying to he revenge that. Maybe he's trying to revenge that question for the last twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> it's all down to me. Uh. Fuck you, Brundle. Okay, last question. Uh, Surveyt James. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, how bad a decision has Lewis made? Well, well. At the start of this year, it looked like he'd absolutely aced it, and I'm fairly sure we talked to that effect that his decision to leave Mercedes and go to Ferrari was looking like a really good one because Ferrari were looking pretty good and Mercedes were looking pretty rubbish. Oh, how the turntables. Have t- tables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two turntables and a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's at, Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> it's suddenly uh, looking like I mean, the trouble is, it can all change on a on a six months ago, can't it? Well, hang on. Yeah, I was going to say, how bad is it? Because things have changed right now, quite quickly. If the this season, season ended right now, I think you'd be like, yeah. oh, fuck. But right. there's half the season still to go. And if the start of this season compared to now has taught us anything, it's mm-hmm. that things can dramatically change. So, <laughs> I was going to say Abu Dhabi. Um, I think he'll be wrong. I think he'll be concerned. Yeah, I don't I know. There'll I be think... a few calls to Fred Vasseur going, uh, Fred, what's. Uh, What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. Ferrari do seem to have lost their way a bit, as Mercedes have got their way. But at the same time, 
I still think he must know something about something. I, I don't know. I feel like it's not as obvious as it looks. Well, because the reason he went to Mercedes was that he was he was sort of sweet talked and convinced into it by Nicky Lauda, wasn't he? That was the sort of the thing that convinced him. Nicky Lauda went to went to Lewis and sat down and said, "Look, these are the reasons why you should go to uh, to Mercedes." Because I think nineteen eighty four. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's all coming back round. But I I don't know who he's got. That, like, there's nobody now, as far Enzo as I'm Ferrari. aware. The ghost of Enzo Ferrari and Nicky Lauda. It's like the bit at the end of Star Wars. And they just appear to him <laughs> as ghosts. And just go, look, I mean, Lewis. Well, how many how many years do you think Lewis has got left in him, in all seriousness? So, what is he now? He's is 40. He 40 or he's coming up to 40. Um, okay, so unless he drags on like Alonso. Well, he's yeah, got... Alonso's he's our age, isn't he? He's a, bit, uh, he's a bit younger than us. He's 43, maybe? I know, but, but I, I, I'm starting to get... Okay, you know that thing where... It's not about bias or anything. Like, I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan, and I want him to do well. And when things are going his way, like when he signed for Ferrari, you're like, yeah, fucking stick it to the man. And like when he won a race, you're like, yeah, I'm glad he did it. And then you get the things that go the other way. And then the rumours that next year Max Verstappen might be in a championship winning Mercedes does make me feel a little bit sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh... Yeah, I mean, maybe his genius touch has left him. Or maybe he's going to turn it around again and he was right all the time. Maybe maybe, maybe the... he just wants to drive for Ferrari. Maybe that maybe. is just something yep. he wants to do. Cause, I you was know, just a boy that... who wanted to work at Dixon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has Enzo Ferrari famously well, said. Welcome back to FF1S. It's now time for our top stories uh, of the month, Phil. Well, top stories that we haven't already talked about in the previous segments. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. No. Yes. Top stories. The, sorry. Top story. Da, 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 These da, are da, our da, top da, da, picks. Da, 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 da. Breaking. Not breaking. It's happened already. Not we're hot really picks. Um, oh, I'd oh. like to talk about yep. Alpine. Who? Uh, <laughs> I think even they're saying that now. Alpine. What the actual fuck is going on at Alpine? I mean, they have turned into. I mean, in a sea of. In a sea of F1 dumpster fires, they, they've they got a big dumpster, and it's really on fire. There's an awful okay. lot of shit going wrong there. Talk me through it. So, so let's so, pretend I've not listened to any F1 since the last podcast. Okay. Francis Rossi from Status Quo was the boss. <laughs> that's No, no, that's that's old news. No, we we had Bruno, Bruno Fama. Um, Hungry. Yes, he was starved of attention. Uh, uh, but he's gone. He's He's out of there. Uh, he's been given the flick, or he's decided to jump. I don't know which. Probably should have looked it up. Didn't. Um, given the flick? Yes. Ping! It's in a low, low reference to oh, hair okay. flick. <laughs> given a hair flick. I'm, well, not, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not. It just yeah. sounded rude, that was all. I just thought it sounded rude. Can, can you on, explain? Uh, can you, in a low, low, you know where they went, oh, oh, oh. and then the other guy went, club. What? What was that joke? I don't know. I can't remember no. it. I don't know that. Well, one, you yeah. just made me say that word on a fucking podcast. Club. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've already said it several times. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Alpine, not not Alpine retreat. Alpine, um, not the music. There's no Berchtus Garden references here. All right, we're talking about Alpine, the team that used to be Renault, and decided, what if we instead of using our name that everybody knows, we tried to uh, promote our very niche road cars that not that many people are buying. Um, so they How's did that. that? Going? Well, I mean, they are good cars, but they've only made one model so far. I think they've got another one about to come out, but it hasn't yet. It's been bloody years. But anyway, um, Alpine, with their Renault engines, <laughs> not anymore. They decided they're not going to make engines anymore because they thought, you know how everybody wants to be a works team? Alpine wants to go the other way. They want to be a customer team now. They don't want to make <coughs> engines anymore. They want to get everybody at the factory in France where they make the engines to do something else to do with cars. They don't want to sell the factory. They just want to make them do other stuff. That's going to be problematic because in France they have a lot of uh, unions, very powerful unions. They had a revolution. They did. Uh, and they, they, apparently the staff are not very happy about it because apparently news about them wanting to do this came out before they'd announced it to the people that were actually <laughs> making the engines. So uh, they oh, look like they might have a strike on their hands, so that's going to be fun. Um, Alpine say, that, I mean, for years, Renault slash Alpine have looked like they don't really want to have an F1 team. They're sort of like the land stroll of teams. And they, they don't seem like they really want to be there. Um, they now say that they're definitely not selling. 
but it does look an awful lot like they're about to sell. Um, they've brought in Flavio Briatore, as we talked about last episode, who, uh, you know, I'm not saying that he's basically stripping it for parts and, you know, preparing it for preparing it to go to the knacker's yard, but that does, uh, maybe that is what he's doing. Um, are they going to sell it? Are they going to shut it? Are they going to sell it to Andretti? Who knows? Anyway, they've got rid of their team principal, Bruno Fama. He's gone. They have now hired your friend and mine. We all know him. Oliver Oakes to be the new team principal. I'm sure you all oh, remember him. Oh, Oliver Oakes. Yeah, you all remember him from, from his long history in F1 that he, checks notes, doesn't have. Um, although he's... Oli Oakes! Actually, he, Oli, Oli, Oli. he is Oli, quite Oli. interesting. I'm going to give you some Oliver Oakes facts. Yeah, go on. Oak fact number one. He used to be a Red Bull Junior driver alongside Jaime Aguasuari, Sebastian Buemi, uh, Brendan Hartley and uh, Sebastian Vettel. So, three of those four drivers I consider to be shit. In fact, there's a fifth driver that I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't actually shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he, he was a former karting world champion. Uh, and oh, we've all been that. In Go the on. process, he, be, he beat top drivers like uh, Jules Bianchi and Valtteri Bottas. Well, yeah. Right. He's depressingly yeah. young for a team principal. He's 36. Uh, and in his driver career, he got as far yeah. as GP3, but then in 2011 decided, ah, that'll do, I'll go into management. But what's interesting here is that his big thing so far in his career is that he founded Hitech, which is a racing company, not the trainers from the 90s. Uh, he, so it's Hitech, uh, which is, has teams in various other, uh, I think they've got GP3, they might even have a GP2 team, can't remember, but they've got various other racing teams. What's an interesting rumour that's come out in the last couple of days is that apparently it's all a little bit murky but apparently another investor in high tech is a certain dimitri mazepin oh for oh. fuck's sake and in related news alpine have just failed to sign carlos Sainz to drive alongside pierre gasly next year so they're currently scouting around for a driver could we see the return of the single worst f1 driver we've ever seen in the form of but Nikita Mazepin next year. Isn't there still sanctions on Russian? Oh, well, maybe. They're still at war. They, maybe they're, uh, you know, authorised neutral athletes now or whatever it is they're doing at the Olympics because there's quite a few Russians at the Olympics. Apparently it's... F- no, they're not Russians. They are... They no, they're are neutral athletes, but yeah. Neutral athletes. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, frankly, it does seem more likely that they'll probably sign Jack Doon if they don't decide to, to shut down the whole... Um, Operation, but then another outside chance. I'm just saying. Before, you, before that, well, I don't like the sound of Jack Doohan because I don't like the name. Well, he's it the would. son of Mick Doohan, the um, don't, don't top care. motorcycle racer. Don't give a shit. We've we've covered we this. We have. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other option for Alpine <laughs> would seem to be if they find themselves at a loss for a driver. Can you think of any F1 drivers that maybe towards the season might find themselves unexpectedly or very expectedly out of a drive? <gasps> Perez. <laughs> Sergio Perez. Is he not the perfect Alpine driver at this point? Oh, Yeah. I do feel a bit sorry for Pierre Gasly because he's sort of still there going, yeah, I held on to my drive. Um, but he might wish he hadn't. But anyway, that that appears, I mean, that was that was with like 10 minutes of research into what's going on at Alpine. I'm sure there's a lot more. It's mad. It's, it's bonkers. Even in the scene. A brief of Google of him, like, and, and I always find this weird when you Google somebody's name. If if like the first two things that come up are their appointments at company's house, I always think that there's something a little bit dodgy going on. You know what I mean? Oh. That's what. Is this Sergio that's, that's what it has been like? Uh, you set up a company for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like that. He's got five yeah, no, don't, appointments. Don't, don't put on my name. <laughs> I haven't got time to go through all the accounts. Somebody else could do it. You do it. Find out if it's dodgy. I don't think high tech are dodgy, but you know, like a lot of. I'm not saying high tech are dodgy. Look, I'm just saying. I got bullied like... a lot for wearing their trainers. Yeah, well, as did I. Yeah. Yeah. And then my mum bought me some... Heads? Do you remember Head? Well, thank you, pardon. No, oh, well, this is, this is what's been married for a while. You've been married for a while as well, have you? <laughs> no. I, this is a slight uh, sideline. But the head the head logo, this is really awful. The, is it awful? It was like a the head logo a looks like... It looks like a stylized bell end. It looks like someone's tried to draw a bell end. <laughs> no, it and doesn't. And they're called Head. Yes, it does. I think you should go and see a, uh, go and see but a doctor. Look at the head logo. Yeah. What, what is it supposed to be? Yeah. I'm seeing a diagrammatic drawing of syphilis. I'm seeing a fish <laughs> looking up. Oh, I'm just getting pictures of head now. I need to... Uh, head logo. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like some at the start of a cock and balls. But just... What's it supposed to be? I think... I don't know. 
a fish. Maybe a fish I was looking at a fish much head. When I was fifteen. A fish yeah, head. No, it's I, a fish. I, it's a fish head. It, maybe it's a fish head. Anyway, what were you talking about? Uh, anyway, I mean that's basically. <laughs> it. I've got no point here. It's just, it's just like Alpine. Oh, Ollie, Ollie, it's Ollie! Alpine, you should know on. this. It's a ski tip as a nod to its ski heritage. Oh, is it actually? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why is there a hole it's in it? Nothing like a ski tip. Yeah. What's the hole for? That's where the bell end goes. Okay, that's where it weaves from. <laughs> um, oh, it does look like a ski tip now. I've kind of yeah. finished my rant now. Alpine, what the actual fuck? Oh, it does. But look like you know, a ski let's tip. see what happens. It's going to be fun. I stopped listening. Yeah, Terry. Everyone did. <laughs> so, two things we haven't really mentioned in this podcast. One is that Lewis Hamilton was taking on two races, but he won one race really fucking well. Oh, yeah, he did. So, well done him. We don't really talk about other, races anymore, do we? We don't talk about races, do we? <laughs> but the other is the Norris Piastri argy bargy from the other, oh, the other that week. Was, that was good. It you was know, amazing. Passive, yeah. aggressive, kind of. It wasn't oh, just them. Think, the, the Red Bull guy, well, Verstappen was doing it as well. Yeah, okay, they're all pissy at that race, weren't they? It was they? very yeah, pissy yeah. race. Yeah, yeah. We should have been tweeting it. But, um, yeah, and he was getting all shitty and, like, the team. And for, so for, two things I want to talk about. One is just how inept the team were at discipline. Because <laughs> you know how, like, most of the teams are like, right, we're going to get, like, Zach Brown on the line and be like, hey, it was very, get in line. Yeah, It was but very multi 21 like, yeah, and it was very kind of like, oh, we just want you to check the tyre. Can you check the tyres? Can you just, oh, we're just worried about the stuff. Oh, God. Mando, you haven't let him buy and you... Do you reckon if you've got, if you've got any time, maybe at the weekend, could you, uh, could you let him check past? Yeah. And he's like, oh, radio check, radio check. Yeah, radio works. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping it didn't. Couldn't have no. noticing, Lando, that, uh, you know, it's not really a problem, but um, that you haven't let past. It went on for some time, didn't it? But by chance, that week, I was watching the F1 TV coverage, like I said just now. <clears throat> and normally you switch over to the Martin Brendel, David Croft commentary. But if you don't, you get, uh, I think it's Ben Edwards, and this week it was David Coulthard doing the co-commentary. And is it Ben Edwards? Or is it it's Alex Jakes, isn't it? Alex Jakes, that's the one, yeah, sorry. And then Alex Jakes started saying to Coulthard and it was uh, it's worth watching with this commentary because you started going oh this is a bit like that time when you had to move over from Mika Hakkinen wasn't it and David Coulthard in the commentary basically just had this like confidence crisis because <laughs> he was like yeah well yeah I can tell you about that yeah yeah this is actually making me feel quite awkward because that was from McLaren as well and it was like my first win and you know whatever all this sort of stuff and they said to they said at some point so, like Ron Dennis or someone came on the radio and just said your position in the team is reliant on what you do now like really putting the pressure on whilst we've got the live radio messages for Norris going um please <laughs> Lando and then like Coulthard was kind of going right yeah but I think I did the right thing for my career and do you know what? I think it was good that I moved over because, you know, I did the right thing for the team. You know, it wouldn't have worked otherwise. And then near the end, he was just like, no, Norris, don't give him the place. <laughs> <laughs> so like, if I was in the car now, I wouldn't give the place over. It's your only chance. I fucked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't become the next me. Don't be me. You could it be was, Mika it was, Hakkinen. It was kind of amazing. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, if anyone if anyone knows where that is on YouTube, it probably is. I'll try and look for it. Yeah, that it's sounds just, great. It's just it's just this slow drip. But I didn't quite clock what was going on. But it was just like he he did seem to be having a real kind of what the fuck have I done? <laughs> I wasted my life. <laughs> Same as that. But yeah, Norris, little That's... shit. And also, you know that bit when oh god, now I've, now we've watched so many races, I forget which one it is. But you know when they're in the cool down room. Mm. And it's, I know, it's the one where Lewis won. It was that race, it was a British Grand Prix where Lewis won. So he was off doing all the kind of, yeah, I won the race, woo. And in the cool down room was Norris and Verstappen. And whether they'd, you know, congratulated him off camera or not, they knew the camera was on. And when he was in the room, they were two little fucking shits. They were just like, oh, don't talk to him, you know. And I, I, I hate, I just, I think I hate them. Wow. And I think I hate Russell. Well, they're good mates, aren't they? Um, just happen in Norris. Yeah, they and are. Yeah, there's there's quotes going around about oh yeah, but you had the f like Norris is always saying stuff like you had the fastest car, it's easy. Well now Norris, you've got the fastest car and you're fucking shit. <laughs> 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 Good 
Good. I mean, we should probably mention Oscar Piastri. He's won a proper Who? race. We won a proper race because previously we've said, oh, he's won a race, but it was a sprint race. Now he's won a mm. proper Grand Prix. And yeah. uh, one, of, one of us here prophesied maybe last season, can't remember when it was, that the next world champion that isn't Verstappen would be Oscar Piastri. Look, he's very good, he and is. I was really, I was really upset for him that his first win was under a bit of a cloud. That um, is a bit of a shame. He didn't look like he was quite so excited as he should have been. No, well, you wouldn't, would you? If it was like I had that all game, but he should have won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I agree, they, but you don't want to win whole, under those circumstances. That whole debacle of like, why don't they just let him win? Because he got the yeah, but they only pitted him first because they were normally if they weren't doing their Norris specific battle. They'd have pitted Piastri mm. first, and he'd have got that advantage. But they decided not to yeah. because they wanted to fight this other battle that Norris was having. So he did deserve it, mm. but he'll win another one because he's going to be the next world champion. Yes. Speaking of world champions and uh, twats, <laughs> I I uh, wanted to talk about um, just Max Verstappen over the last month, really, because he just sort of. I just feel like he's kind of. I mean, you mentioned it briefly there, like uh, on the Red Bull sort of. Uh, radio chat there was lots of um natter going on about uh, well the commentators were talking about it about the fact that he stayed up until what was it like one in the morning or two in the morning doing a sim race and then the following day he was really shitty with his team and uh and he was driving really erratically and i just i don't know i just get the feeling he's starting to lose his head a little bit and he's regressing because that's what he's used regressing to be like. he was fourth and fifth in the last couple of races and, uh, you know, it, maybe the car's not as good crashed. as it should be. He crashed, Into yeah. Hamilton. It, yeah. Um, and I Into just wonder Norris, if he's also reason. losing... Yeah. Is he losing his head too? So if things... Is he kind of... Maybe it's the whole sort of thing with Horner. Like, it all started to slowly fall apart at that point. And then he sort of won. But now is he just like, oh, I don't give a fuck anymore. And is he going to go? And he's just like, whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't even think it's... I don't give a fuck anymore. It's like, I think he's I think he's freaking out a bit. I think he's seeing his empire start to crumble around him. I mean, it's, it's a fair point. Because even just a couple of months ago, it was, oh, Verstappen's won another race. Oh, he's walked it again. He was oh. so dominant. Yeah. And it wasn't even just he's going to win this year. We were all very confidently saying, well, that's this year and next year's championship wrapped up until the rule change. And then out of nowhere, we've had the Horner stuff. We've had Newey leaving. We've had Red Bull getting a bit shitter. We've had three other teams getting good enough to win races. It, Kevin it, Wheatley I mean, leaving. It, it, yeah, it must be a head fuck to be honest just to be uh, and Dietrich Maddis is dying as well it's just like the whole kind of this year has gone from well this is perfect nothing's going to go wrong to oh shit everything's gone wrong mm. and he's yeah. not I dealing almost, with it terribly well I almost feel for him because the person who was helping him deal with it is Mr. Erratic himself Jos Verstappen <laughs> <laughs> who as we know isn't the calmest tool in the box. No, and frankly, half the time, it seems like Verstappen is just kind of like, yeah, I don't always listen to him anymore, but then presumably actually has to because... I think that's going to be the next thing. I think... They're going to be a massive split. Whether Verstappen stays at Red Bull or goes to Mercedes is going to necessitate a split from Jos Verstappen. Well, that's what happened with Hamilton and his dad for ages, didn't it's it? It's true, isn't they it? They fell out. And now they're hugging now when he wins the race. Now they're fine because they're yeah. not at the, they don't have the pressure that he was under before. But there was a point where, I mean, I can't remember exactly how bad it got, but they, they weren't really speaking that much, were they? You never saw them at the races like you do again now. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's all happening Maybe again. it's a rite of passage. You just got to fall out with your dad in F1 and then you get back together. And well, like, I've oh, done that sorry, bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, watch the World Championships roll in. And now it's time for the State of F1 with Terry Saunders. There are two drivers on the current F1 grid with Z in their names. Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez. Shut up, Joe. Yours is silent and you'll be gone soon. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought I'd do some research to check that I was right. And it turns out I was wrong, but not going to change my argument. Both of these drivers, both of these drivers, not that one, Carlos and Sergio, are like moons. Their careers are disrupted by the gravitational mass of other planets, namely Max Venus Stappen and Lewis... Suttonton. <laughs> it's a good try. Good thanks. Carlos is a good driver, having won a race this year. 
Ironically, next year he'll be driving with one of the worst teams on the grid because Lewis Hamilton looks good in red. Sergio, on the other hand, is struggling. He hasn't won a race this year, yet next year he might be driving for one of the best teams on the grid simply because Max Verstappen likes to play with his opponent set to easy. If F1 were a meritocracy, Carlos Sainz would be playing second fiddle to Max because let's face it, he's not going to win. And Sergio would be fulfilling his true calling as a Tom Cruise tripogram. But that's not how <laughs> Formula 1 works. <laughs> I'm happy for Williams. They've got a stellar lineup and Toto Wolf 2.0 in the shape of James Vowles. And as for Red Bull, they deserve everything they get, so screw them. But don't worry, I have a solution. Clearly, sorting drivers based on ability doesn't work. So I thought I'd use the planets to see what astrology and all that bullshit says about their prospective 2025s. So what I did is I, I put in Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez's name, date of birth and place of birth into an uh, online astrological thing it was like a chat GPT thing and then I asked a very specific question for signs of how will I do in next year's Formula 1 World Championship driving for Williams <laughs> and it said your astrological outlook in the next year in the F1 World Championship with Williams looks promising with strong indications of personal growth increased confidence and beneficial opportunities hard work discipline and effective management of emotional intensity will be crucial in achieving success embrace the transformative experiences and leverage your natural talents and the supportive energies around you stay focused keep honing your skills and remain open to lean, learning and collaboration best of luck in your racing endeavours so you know that's... wow <laughs> what a specific and definitely real prediction Whereas for Perez, it says, while your astrological chart shows strong indicators for a successful and transformative year in your career, uh-oh, whether you will specifically drive for Red Bull and where you finish in the Drivers' Championship cannot be determined with certainty through astrology alone. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, I take it back. The aspect suggests potential for significant career advancements and the seizing of fated opportunities. So you should be prepared for major developments and strive to make the most of any opportunities that arise, Alpine. For more detailed professional personal guidance and insights, consider consulting with a professional astrologer who can provide a more nuanced interpretation of your chart. <laughs> That's what he needs. I love so, that yeah. it says nuanced and not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly, the same information, signs positive, it was kind of saying, you're going to do all right with Williams. You're going to, you're going to impress. And Perez kind of went, uh, uh, oh God, he's sure. fighting against destiny. He's fighting Better against a... Jupiter. The planets are not aligned. Around. The moon is yeah. not in Uranus. So oh. I think we can safely say Perez will not be at Red Bull next year, thanks to astrology. But he might be well. doing a little segment on the National Lottery Show, so that's good. <laughs> You can tell us how wrong we are. You can do so via social media. We're at For f one Sake on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and still on Facebook, if anybody checks out these days. Or you can email us, wrong at ff1s.com. Uh, Terry is thirsty, so buy us a pint. Uh, if you want to just say thanks for whatever the hell this is that we do, you can donate one pint if you want, or two pints, or three pints even, at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. And it's now time for the man of the month of driving. Oscar, Oscar Piastri. Piastri. Lewis Hamilton. Oh. Oh. That's it from us. We'll be back next month for another roundup of F1 nonsense. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Tromans. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about pretty much everything because uh, we don't now, because monthly. So, you know, loads of stuff. We haven't talked about it. Yeah. And to Terry Saunders. We haven't even mentioned the rumour that Adrian Newey is going to Aston Martin. Oh, yes! It's a rumour at this Ooh. point. By the time we record the next podcast, it won't be a rumour or it'll be a scurrilous lie. Or it might have been completely <laughs> disproved or proved by the time this actually comes out. Whatever. <laughs> We'll find out. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can see as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. <laughs> However, if you want to watch or listen, just type in for f one sake to something, anything, just whatever you want, and see what comes up. I don't uh, Terry, no, go on. No, 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 fuck, no, I'll stop. Yeah, go no. on. Twitter's a fucking hellhole these days. I'm on Blue Sky now. Oh, I what? see. I went threads. to Threads. 
I'm what on the thread fuck is blue, blue Sky? Blue Sky is a new Twitter. It's lovely. Everyone's it's run nice. by uh, ELO. Uh, they won't be nice for long. It'll get taken over by some... Uh, but look, I'm on threads and Blue Sky at Terry Saunders. If enough people Formula One base follow on there, then we'll start a FF1S account on one of them. I can't be asked to do both or Twitter, but just follow. Yeah, follow Terry also, Saunders. We also have a TikTok and we have a... It's, uh, oh. But we're not going to post on that during races. Uh, Terry, where can people buy merch? ff1s.com forward slash shop 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 excellent thanks for listening I've been Ollie Peer goodbye bye, bye.